Right now, there are way too many AI video generators out there, and a new one drops every week. Some are crazy expensive, and if you want to access all the top models, those costs can stack up fast. Others are cheap, but totally unusable, and even when you do find one that seems good, it starts to break down the second you try to use it in your actual workflow. You spend more time troubleshooting than actually creating the video, so you end up with five different tools, switching tabs, patching stuff together, just to make a 30 second clip. It's messy, slow, and not built for creators who want to get the job done fast. So in this video, I'll show you which AI video tools are actually worth your time and money, how to finally build a workflow that doesn't collapse every time you try something new, and what to use if you actually want to create high quality videos consistently without needing five different apps to do it. Let's dig in. First up is Google VO. It's built for high-end realistic video generation with real camera movements, 4K quality, and full scene understanding. So to use it, I'm heading into the video creation section, and at the top left, I'm selecting the model. I'm going with VO3. It's the newest version, and right now, it's by far the best in terms of realism. There are two main ways to generate videos with this. First is text to video. Let's go with something like a Hollywood movie about a samurai walking through a bamboo forest. I'll be using a pretty long and detailed prompt here, so feel free to pause and read if you want to see the details. It's crucial to be very specific to get the best possible result. The way I like to do that is by giving this prompt to ChatGPT. Make this idea into a super in-depth prompt for VO3. And ChatGPT gives me a very specific prompt tailored to my idea. Now, the reason I'm being this specific is because VO actually understands filmmaking terms like lens size, angles, even movement. So if I type tracking shot or 18 millimeter lens, it'll adjust the footage to match that cinematic feel. Next, I'm turning on the audio. That's optional, but I recommend it because it gives more atmosphere to the output. Below the prompt I just pasted in, I'm enabling auto enhance. This just helps refine the prompt automatically, which makes a big difference if you're not used to writing cinematic level descriptions. Then I hit create and it'll take a bit longer than other tools, but you get back a high resolution video that honestly looks like a professional crew filmed it. So let us check it out. Instantly, we see the cinematic quality and the incredible attention to detail. Now let's try the second option, image to video. Same process here. I'm selecting VO3 as the model, but now I upload a reference image. In this case, I'm using a concept sketch of a futuristic city. Then I type out what I want the scene to be about. Again, here you need to be very specific. So I'm typing in something like animate this concept sketch of a futuristic city. Apply dynamic lighting changes from golden hour into night with glowing city lights. I can turn audio on or off, but this mode doesn't have auto enhance. So creating a good prompt here is more important than in the text to image. Then I click create and after processing, I've got a smooth cinematic video that takes my still image and turns it into a believable motion scene. And although VO's text to image is looking good, text to video gives more promising results. If you're working on anything high end, like a short film, a cinematic ad, or a concept trailer, VO is easily one of the best tools out there. The output looks like it was made by a full production team. It handles lighting, movement, even lens styles with insane detail. But here's the trade-off. It's not built for speed or simplicity. Renders can take longer, and it's not ideal if you're just trying to push out quick content. Also, it's not publicly accessible to everyone yet. Although I found a way to easily access it, as you just saw yourself, but we will get into that later. There's also no set pricing, and you may need to request access or wait until it rolls out more broadly. That's another thing to keep in mind if you're trying to move fast or operate on a budget. So if you're trying to figure out whether VO is right for your workflow, it really depends on your use case. If you need that big screen cinematic look, it's worth the extra steps. But if you're looking for something faster, cheaper, or more flexible, it might not be the best fit. And if you're still not sure, that's exactly why you'll want to stick around. The next few tools each solve a different part of the video creation problem. And by the end, you'll know exactly which one fits your style, your speed, and your budget. Now next up is Kling AI. Kling is one of the more flexible tools out right now when it comes to realistic video generation. It stands out because it can handle both text to video and image to video with a lot of control. Things like prompt refinement, built-in sound and speech, and even camera movement simulation. It's especially good for creators who want believable characters, subtle expressions, and smooth motion without needing complex post-production or multiple apps. So here's how I use it. First, I'm heading to the text to video section. At the top, I'm selecting the Kling 2.1 model. 
That's the latest and best version right now. Once I've selected that, I see the main input panel. I'm starting by typing my prompt. For this one, I'll go with something like a sci-fi motorcycle chase scene in a rain-soaked neon city at night. I go for a dynamic camera motion with a rapid dolly and gimbal movements. Feel free to pause to see the full prompt I'm using. The way I get my prompt to be this specific is the same way I did in the VO section. I just paste this prompt into ChatGPT. Make this idea into a super in-depth prompt for Kling 2.1. Kling is really strong with this type of realistic shots. You can get subtle facial expressions, soft movements, and natural camera work, which makes it perfect for TikToks, persona-style YouTube channels, or any content that features a character speaking or emoting. Once the prompt is ready, I'm enabling the auto-enhance feature. Just like with VO, this refines your prompt to make it more detailed automatically. Then there's auto speech that lets your character talk in the video. It's not perfect, but it's definitely usable if you want basic dialogue without syncing manually. You can disable this if you just want visuals. Now for the duration, you've got five or 10 seconds. I recommend going with five seconds for most use cases. It gives you the best balance between quality and length. The longer ones tend to drop in consistency. Below that is aspect ratio. You can choose between cinema, portrait, and square. If you're creating content for YouTube or most horizontal platforms, go with cinema. For reels or TikTok, portrait is better. Once everything's set, I hit create, and it processes the video. As you can see, the result is insane. Dynamic camera movement, realistic reflections on the wet pavement, and all the little touches like sparks, rain droplets reacting to light, and motion blur. It looks like a full-blown scene from a high-budget sci-fi film. Now let's move from image to video. I'm still using the Kling 2.1 model. First, I upload my reference image. Let's say I've got a digital portrait of a futuristic soldier. So I will write a prompt describing the scene to animate the soldier into a cinematic character reveal. Once again, feel free to pause the screen to read through the entire prompt. Then I go through the same process. Turn the auto speech off for this one. And again, I'm keeping the duration to five seconds. There's a new option here called quality mode. You can pick between standard, pro, and master. I usually stick with pro because it gives a good balance of speed and output quality. Master is a good one too if you want the highest fidelity, but it takes more time. Then I click create, and after rendering, it takes that static image and adds movement, depth, and realism that feels way more lifelike than most tools in this price range. Finally, Kling has a feature called element mode. This is more experimental, and it's only available with Kling 1.6, and what it lets you do is combine multiple images. You can drag in up to four images, like a background, a character, and some props, and it tries to merge and animate them together. It's cool, but I wouldn't use this for a more professional style content. It's still rough around the edges. If you wanna try it, keep your duration short and use pro quality mode for the best results. Kling is the tool you go with if your focus is on realistic characters, expressive motion, and a lot of control over how your scenes feel. It's one of the few tools that actually lets you dial in specific details like sound, camera angles, and speech without needing multiple plugins or external editors. It's best for solo creators, TikTok channels, faceless YouTube formats, or anything where you want a believable digital character to carry the scene. That said, it's not made for huge wide shots, stylized animation, or ultra fast results. It's strong in one lane and it nails that. And if you're still not sure whether Kling is the right fit, keep watching the next tools that might actually be a better match for your workflow. Now let's take a look at Hilo AI. This one's built for speed. It's one of the fastest tools available for generating short videos, and it still manages to keep things looking cinematic. If you're in a situation where you need a video right now, whether it's for a quick post, a client draft, or an idea you wanna test, this is the tool that gets it done without all the setup or waiting around. So here again, I'm starting with the text to video section. I'm selecting the Hilo standard model. It's the main model for general cinematic shots. Now I'm gonna write my prompt. It's a slow motion shot of a ballerina standing alone on a dimly lit stage, bowing down to the audience. Once the prompt is written, I hit the auto enhance button. I just hit generate. In under a minute, I get a full rendered video. It's usually around five seconds long and the rendering time is one of the fastest out of all the tools. Now moving over to image to video. For this part, I'm switching to Hilo Live. This is the version optimized for 2D artwork and illustrations. I uploaded a digital illustration, a fantasy style drawing of a wizard casting a spell. Then I type in the animation description, bring this illustration to life with subtle character motion. The wizard should raise his staff, 
and glowing magical runes should orbit around it. His robe should flutter slightly in the wind. The background sky shifts from day to dusk, with clouds slowly rolling by. Add embers, glowing particles, and camera push in for drama. Then I hit create and wait about 30 seconds. The result is a quick stylized animation that nails the basics. It's sharp and delivers exactly what you asked for without all the waiting. It works especially well for concept art animations, storyboarding, fast ad mockups, or any kind of 2D inspired visuals. Now Halo isn't built for deep customization, so if you're looking to fine tune every frame or direct cinematic shots, it's not that tool. But if your priority is speed with solid quality, it really shines. It's great for creators who want to move fast publish often, and don't want to get bogged down in complex settings. It's also perfect for beginners, since the learning curve is almost non-existent. Now if your focus is on creating animated content, things like anime scenes, motion comics, explainer videos, or stylized intros, Pixverse is the tool built for that. It's not cinematic or photorealistic, it's focused on style-first animation, especially when you want exaggerated movement, strong visual identity, and a more artistic look. So I'm starting in the text to video section and selecting Pixverse 4.5, which is the latest and most accurate model. The settings are similar to what we've already seen, but what's different here is the resolution and art style options. So first I'm typing in my prompt, a magical fox spirit running through a forest filled with floating lanterns. The camera follows in a side scrolling shot as leaves and petals swirl in the air, stylized like a hand-drawn animation with glowing line art and painterly textures add fantasy particle effects, and soft ambient lighting. I'm keeping auto speech off for this one. Now down in the settings, you'll see two unique features. For resolution, you've got three options to choose from. There's turbo, which gives you the fastest render time, but at the cost of lower visual quality. Then there's 720p, which is a good middle ground. And finally, 1080p, which is the one I'm going with here, because I want this output to be high enough quality to use in a final edit or upload directly. As for aspect ratios, it's pretty much the standard set. You've got cinema for YouTube and widescreen formats, portrait for vertical content like TikToks and Reels, and square for more platform flexible content. But Pixverse also includes one more option called classic, which is a four to three aspect ratio. This could be useful if you're going for a retro or vintage style or matching older footage. I set the duration to five seconds and hit generate and this is where Pixverse really does its thing. The movement, the style, even the color grading, it looks like something out of an animated series. And more importantly, it followed the prompt extremely well. The side scroll, the glowing line art, the floating effects, all showed up exactly how I imagined it. Now let's switch to image to video, and here's where Pixverse gives you a really cool tool. You can define both a start frame and an end frame. So for example, I'm gonna upload a dawn scene of a forest as a start frame, and for the end frame, I'll upload a dust scene of that same forest. Then I write the transition prompt, animate this image of a peaceful dawn scene into a smooth time-lapse transition ending in dusk. Everything else has the same setup, 1080p resolution, five seconds, and I hit generate. After rendering, it gives me this smooth transition between two frames. This start to end frame feature is especially useful if you want to simulate more control over camera moves, time lapses, or plan transitions for storytelling formats. It's built for creators who want more than realism, people who want visuals, motion comics, or explainer videos with personality. What makes it stand out isn't just the style, it's how well it sticks to what you actually type. If you ask for glowing line art, side-scrolling animation, or specific transitions, it delivers. It's one of the few tools where you feel like your creative direction is actually followed. The start to end frame feature adds a layer of control that's perfect for storytelling, animated intros, or visual sequences where you want consistency across frames. So by now, you've probably realized something. There isn't one best tool for everything, but there are a few incredible tools that each do well in their own category. Vio gives you cinematic studio grade visuals that feel like scenes from a movie. Kling is perfect for realism, motion, and expressive characters better than anything else. Hilo is built for speed when you need something high quality and you need it fast. Pixverse is perfect for animation lovers, stylized formats, and more creative expressions. Every one of these tools is amazing in its own lane. But here's the catch. Let's say you just bought a subscription to Vio because it's currently the best for making the most realistic videos. Then five days later, Kling releases a major update. 
Now suddenly, that tool is outperforming Vio, but you've already paid for a monthly plan and your budget's blown on yesterday's best model. Things like that are constantly happening in AI video. And unless you wanna be switching tools every week, learning each interface, jumping across sites, managing different logins, or paying for all of them at once, it's a losing game. And that's exactly why I use OpenArt. It's the exact tool you've seen me use for this whole video. OpenArt brings all the top AI video generators into one place with one interface. You don't need five logins, five different sites, or five different ways to learn how to use each model. Everything runs from the same dashboard. You choose the AI video tool you wanna use, like Vio, Kling, Pixverse, or Halo, and just drop in your prompt. That's it. I can start a video with Vio for a cinematic opening scene, then use Kling for a talking head or expressive character moment, and finish with Pixverse for a stylized outro all without switching platforms or relearning anything. What is even better is that when a new AI model comes out, OpenArt adds it right away. You don't have to request access, join a waitlist, dig through Discord for links, or refresh Twitter looking for updates. It just shows up in your dashboard, fully integrated and ready to use. And they don't just add the model, they include a tutorial so you know exactly how to get the best results with it. So you're always working with the best AI video models without having to constantly relearn the wheel every few weeks. And that's exactly what makes OpenArt so good. I use it all the time. I'll leave a link for you in the description down below so you can try it out. I highly recommend it. And as always, good luck with your video creations.